All right, guys, so this is another example of the first law of thermodynamics. So I'm told that I have a closed system, and I have m equals 10 kilograms, and I have work done by the system, work equal to 0 0.147 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is actually going to be uh, work per unit mass basis, because we have um, kilojoules joules per kilogram. And then we're told that the elevation decreases 50 meters, so that means that the difference of Z2 minus Z1 is equal to 50 meters, but make sure you make negative 50 because it's a decrease in elevation, so you're actually going to have uh, less height at Z2 than you are at Z1. We're told that the velocity increases from 15 meters per second to 30 meters per second, so we can have V2 minus V1 is going to be equal to 30 meters per second minus 15 meters per second. We're also told that the specific internal energy decreases by five kilojoules per kilogram. So what that means is that U2 minus U1 on a per unit mass basis is equal to negative five kilojoules per kilogram. And the acceleration G is going to be 9.7 meters per second squared due to gravity. And we're asked to find the heat transfer Q and it's going to be in bulk form, so some number in kilojoules. We're going to start by applying the first law of thermodynamics, which just states that the change in total energy is going to be equal to the heat transfer minus the work. Now, if we break this down a little bit further, we'll have that the change in internal energy plus the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy it's going to be equal to heat transfer minus work. Now I'm just going to rearrange and solve for the heat transfer. And with that done, all we have to do is find the bulk form using the specific form on a, on a per unit mass basis. All we have to do is multiply this difference times the mass, and we can get our bulk form here. So we're going to have that the heat transfer is going to be equal to the mass times U2 minus U1. And next we're going to find the kinetic energy, which is going to be uh, plus 1 over 2 mv2 squared minus v1 squared. The potential energy is going to be mgz. And finally, the work is going to be equal to the work per unit mass basis, given in the problem, times the mass. Now I can just plug in what's given to me, so we're going to have that the heat transfer, Q, is equal to 10 kilograms times the change in specific internal energy was negative 5 kilojoules per kilogram. And we have to make sure that every unit here, so we have the internal energy, the kinetic energy, potential energy, and work, all must be in kilojoules or you can't add them up. So in this case of the uh, internal energy, we can just cross out the kilojoules, I mean the kilograms, I'm sorry, and you're left with the kilojoules right up here. So know that that one works out. Now we can add the kinetic energy, which is going to be equal to 1 over 2 times the mass of 10 kilograms times the change in velocity, which is going to be 30 meters per second squared minus 15 meters per second squared. So now let's look at the units we have for the kinetic energy. So we're going to have kilograms times meters per second, and both of those units are squared. So we need this unit to be in kilojoules, so let's just see what we're working with here. So remember that a kilojoule is going to be a unit of work, which is going to be equal to force times distance, which would be equal to a newton times a meter. And then if you remember from Newton's first law, a newton is going to be equal to, or a force is going to be equal to mass times acceleration, which would just be a kilogram times meters per second squared. And then you multiply that whole newton times a meter, and you're going to have a kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is exactly what we have over here. So in other words, the unit for this kinetic energy that we have is currently a joule. So we need to convert from this joule to kilojoule with a conversion factor. And to get from joules to kilojoules, you just divide by 1000. So we're going to multiply this by one over 1000 to get kilojoules. And now that the kinetic energy is in kilojoules, we can move on to the potential energy. So we're going to add plus the mass was 10 kilograms times the gravity was 9.7 meters per second squared and Z was negative 50 meters. 
And if you look at the unit, we have a kilogram meter squared per second squared, which is exactly what we had over here, which is once again a joule. So we just have to divide by a thousand again to get into kilojoules. So I'll add the conversion factor at the end again. So we have one kilojoule per 1000 joules. And with that unit finally in kilojoules, we can add the work. So the work was going to be equal to 0 0.147. And that was kilojoules per kilogram. And we're just going to multiply that by the mass, which was once again, 10 kilograms. And very simply, we can cancel the kilograms out and we're left with kilojoules. And now if you plug all this into your calculator, you'll solve that the heat transfer is going to be equal to negative 50.005 kilojoules.